Growing up, um, I, too numerous to mention. I had a lot of influences. I think when you're uh, really young, um, anything, anything that's on and that your parents are listening to, that your friends are listening to, your siblings, all that stuff will seep in somehow. Um, and then sort of uh, somewhere along the line, you start developing your own sort of taste and then, you know, the things that move you personally, you start, but it's usually you're, you're picking from whatever your parents have, you know? Um, so, you know, I did all the usual suspects, I think for, for, um, any Canadian kid growing up when I was growing up, you know, but, uh, way too numerous to get, like we'd be here for an hour and I still wouldn't be, you know, I, I wouldn't be halfway done. Uh, it was mainly, <clears throat> it was mainly uh, to throw people off the scent of, of it being a Thornley thing, because that was pretty, it was a, a pretty heavier sound and um, sort of geared for rock radio kind of kind of thing, which this isn't. Um, so, and I, I don't know who suggested it, but I was like, sure, you know, makes me sound more like a singer songwriter or something. Uh, more like a, a bow tie kind of fella, but I, I, you know, yeah, it was just uh, just something to say. Okay, it's not this. It's not this. It's something else. It's something different. Um, so I, you know, I don't think it really needs it. I don't introduce myself as Ian Fletcher Thornley or anything. Uh, but yeah, it was just a way to sort of separate it from the other things I do. The way, well, depending on the project, um, yeah, um, yeah, it's always you're always you're always hoping to to get better. You're always hoping for each show is is a, is an opportunity. You know, um, no two shows are the same, uh, and certainly with with an outfit like this, with a drummer like Glenn, it's a, he can do so much, and he's so musical, and everybody on stage is is doing that they're they're feeding off one another and, and uh you know every every night is an opportunity for something magical to happen um and it, you know that that to me is is inspiring and fun and uh i you know days off are kind of like a bummer like this i don't i don't like days off i want to keep playing and playing it's, it's you know i really enjoy it and playing with these guys is is especially fun as it is with big wreck uh, I think we sort of learned that coming back around sort of the second time with Big Wreck. Uh, keeping things fresh and keeping things fun from night to night was, you know, a big part of it for us. Um, and that carries over into this, uh, for sure, you know. Be, everybody wants everybody wants to play. Every, it's, you look forward to it from the moment you wake up, and you're like, I can't wait to sound check, and, you know. It's like, yeah, there's always, it's, it's an opportunity for something to happen. You know? there's, uh, there's so many. I've been doing this for a while, since I was like 13. <laughs> and that's a lot of years. So, uh, no, I have, I have a lot of them. There are a lot of moments that stand out, and the good ones and bad ones, and, you know. I guess I know you've do it, been doing it as long as I have. You, I've spent a good portion of time, you know, on stage playing music to to crowds and to empty rooms. So it, you know, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to just say one. Well, this was the most memorable. There have been a lot of mishaps that are pretty memorable and fun to tell. You know, great party jokes and stuff. But uh, I don't know. I couldn't I couldn't pick just one. It's usually the music. Uh, it's always the music, almost always. Um, I mean, I have I have sort of pads around my place with with different things sketched out on them that that uh, you know oh, this would be a great idea or like just this sort of turn of phrase that I'm like, mm, that's I got to use that. Um, and sometimes they make they find their way into songs, but it's not, I won't write a song from that. Um, it's usually from 
the music. It's usually from either a melody or changes or a riff or, you know, the way certain chords fit together. Um, and then some somehow when the melody is fitting over the changes, the melody will usually spit something out. Uh, either a sort of a melodic rhythm that lends itself to a certain lyrical thing. Um, and sometimes a, oh, it's just a word. Sometimes it's a line. Something will just land in your lap. And then, you know, if it the, its relationship with the music, what that series of words and the music together, what they say, usually tells the story right there. Um, sometimes it's hard. You know, sometimes you labor over, over it for a long, long time. And sometimes it, it's really quick and it just writes itself. Uh, so, you know, obviously the preferred way is when it just falls out of the sky into your lap and it's like, yeah, I got a beautiful song. I love it. Um, but there is, you know, there is something to be said for just working it and kneading it and squeezing it until, you know, everything, every last drop is, okay, now I think it's, now I think it's ready. You know, there's something to be said for that. But you usually, you're not quite as enamored with those ones as you are with the ones that just, because you've been listening to it for so long, you know. Um, the ones that just kind of pop out are usually your favorites. Uh, so yeah, if I could have that happen all the time, you know, that'd be great. Um, that changes from night to night, I think. Uh, sometimes it's an older one, sometimes it's a newer one. Uh, the newer stuff is generally more fun for us to play, but the older stuff will get more of a reaction from the crowd, which is, which makes it fun. Um, so, it, you know, that does change, though. I, I, love, I, I wouldn't have something in the set that I didn't want to play. Um, I've had that before, and it sucks. Like, when you have a song that you just not, you don't like it, but you have to play it. Um... And that's, yeah, that's not a good place to be. Um, so I'm, I, I consider myself lucky, and us, that I think I can speak for them too, that, that we love the music we're playing. Um, but as far as a favorite goes, you know, whichever one gets the best reaction, I guess, you know. Well, I, I, I came to guitar pretty late. I it must have been 16 or 17. Um, I don't really know. It might have been uh, Bruce Coburn's Going to the Country. I think that might have been it, like the first. Because I was like, oh, it's just these chords. And then you, because I was a piano player, so I, I wouldn't use it. I, had, I didn't start with a pick. I started with fingers. So I was doing all finger picky stuff. It might have been Bruce Coburn's Going to the Country. And it might have been Stairway to Heaven, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't really know. It just sort of, it all happened so fast, you know. Once I, once I figured out how, not how easy it was, because it's not really easy, but I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, a lot of songs that you, that you love and that you hear on the radio or that you grew up with, a lot of those songs are very simple. And once you figure that out, that it's, you just make your hands do this and then, you know, you have the same sound and you can recreate it. It's, you know. Uh, that simple turn is, is uh, it, it just the floodgates open up and then, it, you know, you just want to learn everything. And I'm still in that mode. I still just want to learn everything. So um, I don't know what at first, probably going to the country, Bruce Coburn. That would be the first thing I, I tried to tackle. Oh, there's a bunch. <clears throat> We were just talking about Brothers in Arms this morning. I wish I wrote that one. That's great. But I mean, that's sort of a different level. I, I could never see myself writing something like Brothers in Arms. Having said that, you know, it's been, it's been such a heavy and important song since I was a kid, you know. Um, but there's, there's so many. And some of them are just riffs. Like, man, why couldn't I have written that riff? Uh... I just, a lot of a lot of Sting stuff, a lot of the police songs. I'm just like, ah, oh, I wish I wrote that. That's great. Um, you know, pretty much most of the music I adore, I wish I'd written. 
just very selfishly, you know. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's there's a great deal of music that I just appreciate it for what it is, and uh, you know, I I don't spend too much time wishing I had written it, but wishing I could write like that. Yeah, I do that a lot. I don't know. I honestly don't. I always try to say something goofy, but I end up sounding like an idiot, and I, I don't really have an answer. I, there's there's nothing I could really do. <clears throat> um, well, yeah. Yeah, I don't... I, I've never really had a backup plan, you know? Um, yeah, I'd be screwed. I, I don't know. But it, it, anything that I would do would have to do with music or art somehow, so... Yeah, this is kind of it. <laughs> hey, thanks. Yeah, well, you know, I you, you work hard at it, and you know, hopefully, you can carve out a career at it. So, you know, but like I said, we got off stage last night. I didn't get back to the hotel and get to sleep until 2 a.m. Then I was up at 5:30 a.m. for a 6 a.m. lobby call. So we're all a little tired. It's a glamorous life, you know. So, but I mean, I, you just sort of roll with it, and I'm learning to nap. You nap when you can. Caffeine helps, uh, but still, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's, uh, you know, like I said earlier, just to get to share the stage with those guys and create music, and it's always, it's always that, uh, you know, those moments that happen when it's just sheer magic and it's I don't know where it comes from or how we all get there but when those things happen that makes it all worthwhile you know it's really what you're doing it for you know it's not the money <laughs> uh, yeah but uh, I can't really complain it's I'm lucky I'm lucky to be able to do it you know and to not have a backup plan I wouldn't suggest that to my daughter by any stretch like you go to school and you know become a lawyer um Actually, I wouldn't want that. But no, it's, uh, I guess that's one way to just really commit yourself to something. But you got to be sure that you love it, you know, because you take the, take the good with the bad. And the good can be great, but the bad can be really, really bad, you know. Um, but yeah, thank you for saying. So I, I don't know about a ritual, but uh, big rec shows are, are you know, the last several tours that we've been on, it's it's changed a little bit. Like, I've started to shorten my time. It used to be two hours before, and I would just start slowly trying to wake up my throat a little bit and, and try to wake up my fingers a little bit. And just, it's just a matter of almost hypnotizing yourself into a groove with the guitar and with singing and, and just getting everything loose and then start stretching things and trying to go higher and faster and getting ready to hit the stage um but i was i've recently been taking vocal lessons and he said yeah you're going way too long 20 minutes half hour it's all you need it's like what um so yeah i've been doing it all wrong apparently i've been hitting the stage gassed already like no trust me so i, I tried that last night and i i don't know if it made a difference it, once you get into you know, once you get into a show, you just sort of do what you do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it is important uh, for me to make sure that my hands are ready and that my throat's ready. Um, there's nothing worse than just sort of, <clears throat> and, and, you know, feeling tight and your hands feeling sort of stiff. Um, yeah, but having said that, conversely, there's been times when uh, flights delayed or so something and, and you don't have time to do that so you just show up and you get on stage uh, and then you have a great show because you're not prepared for anything you haven't thought about it. you're in the moment you take everything as it comes um, having said that I wouldn't want to do that by choice I'd rather be there um, prepared and ready so yeah I think that's pretty much it yeah. it's, not, it's nothing nothing you know cool or glamorous or like well I like I, I will need it's nothing like that there's no incense burning there's no black light there's no 
it's a bunch of dudes sitting around eating Tostitos, playing guitar and making, doing lip rolls and singing scales. Really, you know, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's a lot of places I want to go. You know. Not even. Just to go see. Um, I've been lucky enough to travel a lot, but it's most of it's been in North America. I've pretty much seen everywhere in North America. A lot of it. For a long time. Um, but yeah, and I've spent some time in Europe. But there's a, you know, there's a, a lot of places I'd really like to see. Um, that I'm fascinated by. So maybe just, you know, certain destinations that I have in the back of my mind that I'd like to see, maybe that would be on my bucket list. It's not like, you know, skydiving or jumping off uh, the roof of a building with a, you know, what do they call that? I, I wouldn't do that. Um, there aren't really any, any things like that, like to own a Porsche. No. Uh, yeah, I would, I just want to be happy. That's my bucket list. I want to die a satisfied man, that's all. Uh, next year, because it's going to be a good one. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't really have one of those. I don't spend a lot of time looking back. Um, it's probably for good reason, too. It's been an interesting couple of years, so I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't have one from my past that I would relive. Because every every single one of them, if I sort of went through and um, went through it with a fine tooth comb, there's probably a lot of stuff in there that I'd want to redo. You know. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I've lived that year yet that I'd want to repeat. You know. But yeah, next year it's going to be the one. Yeah, there's a lot of them, uh, but I, you know, that kind of thing is, uh, a lot of it is chemistry and a lot of it is just people. It's all just people to me anyway, you know, you can, something can look great on paper, um, where musically, oh, we're going to fit like Lego, but it, it really does come down to chemistry and relationships and people and, and, you know, that connection I think is is something that helps the other one. So, you know, oh, well, work with anybody. If, if the chemistry's right and, and if we're both chasing the right things, you know. Um, if, they, yeah, if musically, if it lines up and sort of personality-wise, if it lines up, most musicians are pretty easy to get along with, I find. Um, I don't know, a lot of people say a lot of different things about musicians, but... The ones that I've met, so... Yeah, I'd work with anybody. <laughs>